They've shattered oil platforms, swallowed tankers, and nearly capsized the largest ships in the world, all in less than a minute. For centuries, sailors who spoke of these killer waves were dismissed as liars or drunkards. But wreck after wreck told the same story. Ships vanishing in calm seas or returning battered by something far beyond what storms alone could explain. Today, satellites and instruments confirm what mariners always knew. The ocean hides monsters. And unlike myths or legends, these monsters are very real. They are rogue waves. And in this video, we're diving into why they are the ocean's most terrifying threat. Before we get started, let me know in the comments. Would you dare to face the open sea, knowing a wave taller than a building could rise out of nowhere? Most waves have a rhythm. Wind, tides, and storms push the sea in patterns that sailors can read. Rogue waves break every pattern. By definition, they're giants, at least twice as tall as the surrounding waves, sometimes reaching 80 or even 100 feet. That's the height of a 10-story building driving forward with the force of a freight train. Unlike tsunamis, which sweep across entire coastlines, rogue waves are short-lived and local. They appear suddenly and vanish just as fast, leaving behind wreckage and confusion. For as long as people have gone to sea, there have been stories of waves too big to believe. 19th century ship logs describe walls of water rising out of nowhere smashing over the decks of 300-foot vessels and sweeping entire crews into the sea. On land, these accounts were dismissed as exaggerations, drunken sailors spinning tales or officers inventing excuses for ships lost to storms. But the wrecks kept piling up. Vessels built to survive ordinary tempests were vanishing without a trace, often in seas where no storm had been recorded. Still, the reports kept coming. Fishermen spoke of walls of green water blocking out the horizon. Naval officers warned of sudden impacts that bent iron and splintered wood. The stories of rogue waves weren't just old sailors' tales. Some of the most dramatic encounters in maritime history point to these monsters of the sea. In 1942, the British ocean liner, Queen Mary, was carrying 15,000 troops across the Atlantic. A rogue wave estimated at nearly 100 feet tall, struck broadside. The ship rolled so violently that for a moment it seemed certain to capsize. Thousands of soldiers rushed to the decks in panic, believing their voyage, and possibly the war effort itself, was about to end. By a miracle, the Queen Mary righted herself, but the event left her crew shaken and silent. Three decades later, in 1978, the German cargo ship MS München vanished in the middle of the Atlantic. The vessel sent a brief distress signal and then disappeared without a trace. Weeks later, fragments of wreckage washed ashore. Lifeboats ripped from their heavy mountings, steel twisted as if by a giant's hand. No storm had been reported that night. Investigators concluded the ship was likely struck by a rogue wave and sunk within minutes. In October 1991, the fishing vessel Andrea Gale set out from Massachusetts and never returned. Caught in what became known as the perfect storm, the crew radioed home as the seas worsened, then went silent. Wreckage later washed ashore, but the ship and her men were gone. The storm itself was ferocious, but many researchers believe the final blow was a rogue wave, the kind of sudden wall of water that can break even the toughest vessel. Even modern passenger liners have had close calls. In September 1995, the Queen Elizabeth II was battling Hurricane Luis in the North Atlantic when a rogue wave nearly 95 feet tall rose in front of her. Captain Ronald Warwick later described it as a vertical wall of water, like sailing straight into the white cliffs of Dover. The Queen Elizabeth II survived, but the crew admitted that if the wave had hit broadside, it could have been a disaster on the scale of the Titanic. And in 2001, two cruise ships, the Bremen and the Caledonian Star, were both hit in the South Atlantic. Windows more than 60 feet above the waterline were smashed, 
flooding control rooms and injuring passengers. Both ships lost power and drifted helplessly before crews regained control. Oil platforms, too, have been caught in their path. Crews have reported watching walls of water rise from the horizon, hitting with such violence that steel decks buckled and equipment weighing tons was swept away. But how could waves sink ships built to withstand the worst storms? The answer lies in the way rogue waves strike. Ordinary swells lift and drop a vessel in steady rhythm. Rogue waves don't. They rise almost vertically, like a moving cliff, and crash down with staggering force. The pressures involved are immense. Engineers estimate that a rogue wave can hit with more than 100 tons per square meter, enough energy to deform steel, smash hatches, and destabilize a vessel in seconds. Thousands of tons of water can crash onto a deck in a single blow, flooding holds and throwing a ship off balance. Worse still is the speed. A rogue wave can form and strike in under a minute. Radar often fails to catch them in time, leaving crews with no chance to prepare. Nowhere is this more feared than the Drake Passage, the stretch of ocean between South America and Antarctica, where the Atlantic, Pacific, and Southern Oceans collide. Here, relentless winds circle the globe without interruption, stacking waves higher and higher. Ships crossing the passage have reported walls of water slamming into their hulls with explosive force, tossing research vessels like toys and twisting metal built for polar conditions. Even modern ice-strengthened ships speak of rogue waves rising out of nowhere, leaving crews shaken and decks torn apart. For sailors, it's one of the most dangerous crossings on Earth. These aren't storms that can be tracked or avoided. They are sudden, violent, and often fatal. For centuries, the stories of rogue waves lived in ship logs and sailors' warnings, dismissed by those who never saw them. That skepticism ended on January 1st, 1995. In the North Sea, an oil platform called the Dropner was fitted with high-precision sensors to measure storm conditions. On New Year's Day, with winds howling and heavy seas pounding the structure, the instruments recorded something no one thought possible. A single wave, 25.6 meters tall, more than 84 feet. The platform survived, but the reading stunned scientists. According to the wave models used at the time, an event of that scale in the North Sea should only happen about once every 10,000 years. Yet there it was, rising out of an ordinary storm. The Dropner wave forced a complete rethink. Shipbuilders began questioning whether modern vessels were strong enough. Soon after, satellites scanning the world's oceans confirmed the unsettling truth. Rogue waves weren't freak accidents. They were forming everywhere, in the Atlantic, in the Southern Ocean, off South Africa, and beyond. Normally, swells move across the sea in organized patterns, some rising, some falling. But under the right conditions, several systems can collide, their energy stacking together instead of canceling out. This process, called constructive interference, can create a single crest far larger than anything around it. Currents make the danger worse. Off South Africa, the warm Agulhas current collides with colder southern waters. In the Southern Ocean, Winds circle the globe without interruption, building waves for thousands of miles. These are breeding grounds for rogue waves, places where energy has nowhere to go but up. And they don't only belong to history. On November 17, 2020, a buoy off Vancouver Island on Canada's Pacific coast recorded a rogue wave 17.6 meters high, nearly 58 feet, in seas where surrounding waves averaged just six meters. Using modern statistical models for that location and sea state, scientists estimated a wave of that proportion should only occur once every 1,300 years. And yet, it happened just miles from a quiet coastline. Despite decades of research, prediction remains nearly impossible. Rogue waves don't march across the ocean like tsunamis. They rise, strike, and vanish in minutes, 
leaving behind only damage and disbelief. Today, no one doubts rogue waves are real. The question is how to live with them. Shipbuilders design with higher safety margins, reinforcing hulls and hatches. Cruise lines install thicker glass. Offshore oil platforms are engineered to take hits. Older rigs would never have survived. But even with stronger designs, there are limits. A ship may survive storm after storm, but one rogue wave can still end it. Insurance companies quietly factor rogue waves into their models, adjusting premiums for ships that cross high-risk waters. Navies train crews to face sudden flooding or capsizing. For sailors and fishermen, the fear is simpler. You can plot around hurricanes, but you cannot plan for a wave that comes out of nowhere. Don't forget to subscribe for more stories of dangerous waters and lost ships. And let me know in the comments, which ocean mystery should I cover next? Another deadly passage, a ghost ship, or a survival story from the edge of the world?